So uh, we're going to be talking about uh, some Joe Pye weeds. We're going to talk about the hollow Joe Pye weed. We're going to talk about uh, the spotted Joe Pye weed and the purple Joe Pye weed. And by the end of this video, you're going to hopefully be confident in knowing the difference between the three. Right next to me, this is Eutrochium fistulosum. Eutrochium fistulosum, the hollow Joe Pye weed. So the hollow Joe pie weed, uh, first off, is, is oftentimes taller than the other two species. Um, there's a couple I've seen that are like eight plus feet tall. This one's on the, maybe the shorter side. I'm just under six foot, so you know, we're talking six and a half, seven feet here on this one. Um, so, uh, so in this, you can see right away before we really get a close up on some of the features that are gonna make this, the hollow Joe pie weed. You can see here this dome shape of the inflorescence. This dome shape of the inflorescence. And that's gonna be one of the keys in telling this apart from the other two. So oftentimes it has this glaucous stem, this hairless stem, it's that waxy coating there, the glaucous stem. And sometimes on some of these that are, that are around us, there's a, a little bit of hair in the, in, the, in the inflorescence, on the top of the inflorescence there, a little bit of hair on the top of the inflorescence. There's a silver spotted skipper that's, that's bouncing around in here. Just skippers are great. Just love the skippers. Um, the leaves are going to be in worlds of uh, of over four. This one's got two, four, six, seven. This one's got seven. Um, oftentimes you see them five to six. Oftentimes you see them five to six. Seven is is pushing the limits. But you know we got to take it to the limit one more time. Um, let's oh let's take a look at these leaves. Let's take one of these leaves off, and then we're going to talk about where the name Eutrochium actually came from. So this is toothed so it has these 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 lovely t big teeth these teeth on the side kind of tapers to the tip here um the the abaxial or the bottom of the leaf is going to be this one's super hairy and glandular a little bit glandular um it could be sparsely hairy to nearly glabrous as well oh my goodness i'm seeing some kind of skipper pause Getting back to it, I just saw a male Zabalin skipper and a uh, little worn, so it, I, I wanted to see what it was. I got excited for a second. Um, but anyway, so back on that baxial surface of the leaf, so it's going gonna, it's gonna to be, this one's super hairy actually, and, and you can see it almost glistening, maybe not in the video, but in my eyes I can see it glistening. Um, so again, that glock is going to have a hollow stem as well. It's going to have a hollow stem. That's where the hollow Joe Pieweed comes in. Um, and we'll talk in a bit where Joe Pieweed, that name comes from as well. Uh, Eutrochium, it used to be a Eupatorium, uh, but it got pulled out uh, in uh, just more recently uh, into Eutrochiums from Eupatorium. And uh, Eutrochium, Eup and one of the, the chief differences is these are all going to be world and Eupatoriums are going to be opposite. And also the filleries, which we'll look out here in a second, the filleries of the flowers are going to be unequal. They're, going to, they're not equal in eutrochiums, where they are equal in uh, eupatoriums. So let's take, a, let's take a close look at these flowers, shall we? So uh, this is in the Asteraceae, the Asteraceae, the Aster family, um, and it's going to have discoid flower heads. And I'm going to do a special, uh, an introduction to Asteraceae, and so you know what I'm talking about. But in short, it's just going to be um, these, all these little flowers. This is a, a group of flowers right here. And... Um, and there's going to be less than eight flowers, usually like four to seven, um, you know, up to, I've seen a couple with nine, but usually like four to seven. So eight and under is, is usually the number. Uh, and that's an important feature too, a uh, diagnostic feature. So uh, the habitat is, it's, it likes its feet wet. So, I mean, uh, we're, we're talking up here, it's more in like wet sand prairies, wet sandy areas, but throughout its range, it likes, you know, good alluvial wet soil, uh, I guess it even shows up in bogs, stream banks. Um, it's got a very wide, variable habitat. Uh, and it it's mostly occurs in eastern and southern United States. This is kind of the farthest north it goes, in the Midwest at least. So yeah, so this is uh, Eutrochium fistulosum. Oh, fistulosum, I should tell you where that name comes from. So fistulosum actually just means hollow. And again, it's in, in uh, regards to its, its, its hollow stem. All right, so this is Eutrochium maculatum, the spotted Joe pie weed. What you're going to want to note right away is the nice flat-topped array of the uh, of this flower head here. This is one of our the uh, more northerly of our of our three species of Joe pie weed that we get in the region. Uh, it's commonly found in habitats such as like a floodplain forest or a marsh, really any kind of open uh, weather areas. You're going to find this plant growing in. 
All right, so looking now towards the stem of this uh, eutrochium right here, what you're going to no want to note right away is this nice, nice spotted purple coloration, which is where this plant gets its uh, species name from, maculatum. What you're also going to note about the stem is the uh, whorl of leaves, coming, giving it the name eutrochium. This one's going to have between four and six leaves per whorl. Uh, and moving on up to the inflorescence. Now looking to the uh, flowers in particular, in the Eutrochium maculatum, the flowers are going to be between 8 and 20 per head uh, of these nice little discoid flowers, and you can see the filamentous styles poking out of them, those getting ready to uh, receive pollen and stuff of that nature and uh, facilitate the fertilization and production of seed. So one more note about the stem here, you're going to notice that there's some pubescence here distally at the uh, top end of it by where the flower head is. But then you'll note that primarily throughout the plant it's going to be smooth, and you can use that to distinguish it from a more western subspecies, which is uh, Eutrochium maculatum vernerii, which is going to be densely puberulent throughout the entirety of the stem, not just at the distal ends. So here we have Eutrochium purpureum, Eutrochium purpureum, um, otherwise known as the, uh, the, I guess it's the purple Joe Pie weed. It's oftentimes, you know, um, beside just like forest edges and borders, uh, you know, you see it often on like stream banks, river banks, uh, um, usually in like richer soil, you know, sometimes floodplains. Um, you know, the heads, the heads, let's go back over here and look, the heads aren't really flat, top, flat topped, so it looks more like fissulosum than maculatum in the way the heads are more in that dome shape, in that dome shape. Um, and then we have a couple varieties, uh, and we'll talk about those here in a second. So the, again, this is Eutrochium purpureum. And these heads, um, they're in a, like, compound uh, corymbiform uh, inflorescence, as you can see here. Um, Let's take a look at these, at these, uh, at these flowers per head. So in each one of these heads, there's going to be under seven flowers per head. There's going to be under seven flowers per head. This one has one, two, three, four, five, six. That one has six. Um, yeah, and that separates it again. You know, we talked about maculatum having having uh, more than ten flowers per head, and this one's got less. Another thing to note here, and let's take a look at the stems. These stems are glabrous and they're green. They're solid. Um, they're not hollow like you're going to see in fistulosum or somewhat hollow like you're going to see in maculatum. Um, they're hollow or they're solid. They're hairless and then they usually have purple on the nodes. They have per This one's not a great example up here. Let's look up here. They usually have purple on the nodes. Sh shadows are making it hard to see the purple. Uh, that one's not as purplish. But up there, see, look at that. That's purple on the nodes. Purple on the nodes. It's going to have three to four rarely five out where I'm at now there's a couple beefy ones three to four um, three to four uh, leaves per whorl uh, three to four leaves per, per whorl I told you there's two varieties there's variety purpureum and there's variety Holzinger Holzinger uh, and this is Holzinger if you look at the back seal the back side of the leaf you can see that it's hairy densely pubescent all the way along the backside here, densely pubescent, all the way along the backside. And on purpurea and purpurea, it'll just be hairy along the veins usually, um, or not much at all. Um, so that's one of the big differences between the two varieties. Uh, and this is, I'm in Northern Illinois right now, um, where this occurs. Um, so uh, again, variety Holzinger has all the hair. Uh, if you can see that, purpurea does not so much. So I think that's it for purpurea. Um, but yeah, this is a, another of the three. This is a really cool plant. So, so the ones we're looking at obviously today is uh, maculatum, fistulosum, and purpureum. The most common, often confused. And remember, first look at that inflorescence. If it's a big dome shape, it's either going to be fistulosum or it's going to be purpureum. It's a little more flat topped. You have maculatum. Then look at those flowers. If the flowers are under ten, usually under seven. You know, if the flowers in the flower heads are under seven, you're going to have fistulosum or purpureum. If they're over ten consistently, then you're going to have maculatum. And then that, that, that stem, if it's spotted, you know, hairy, spotted, you could probably got maculatum. If it's glaucous, big and hollow, you probably got fistulosum. If it's green and then just purple on the nodes, you got yourself some purpureum. And lastly, you know, Looking at those leaves, how many leaves you got in a whorl? If it's you know three to four, you probably got purpureum. If it's uh, more than that, 
you got either maculatum or fistulosum. I hope this helps you and I hope now you can feel confident in looking at a eutrochium in the United States and say, I know what this is. We also have eutrochium dubium, which is kind of a coastal plant. And maybe I'll take a trip sometime over to the East Coast from South Carolina all the way up to Nova Scotia and do a video on dubious. Dubium, excuse me. And then there's uh, Stilii, which is kind of the, an Appalachian one. Maybe I'll take a trip over to the Smokies, you know, and do a video on that too. All right, so you might be wondering as to where the name Joe Pieweed comes from, and that's actually something that's been kind of a subject of some conflict in academia. But a really great paper came out recently in the Great Lakes Botanist by Pierce and Pringle, and what it, the verdict that they came down on was that Joe Pie, he was a Mohican Satian who lived in between the 18th and early 19th century, lived in between Massachusetts and New York. He was a Satian, so what he was was a medicine man, and the legend goes that he would use decoctions of the Joe Pieweed to help treat people. And that's where the name Joe Pieweed originates. 